Sifu in Numbers I still can't believe this game released two years ago. Mostly because people are still playing it, people are still talking about it, people still want to see more Sifu. We are eager to see where the studio goes after Sifu, hopefully to something better. I have no doubt Slow Clap is going to deliver, but I always have one question. Do you see people talking about Stray? Do you see people talking about the cat game? I don't think so. For a reason. Anyway. <laughs> Sifu in numbers. Two years of Sifu. And Slow Club was kind enough to release the numbers, the data they collected throughout those two years. And I would like to go through those numbers with you. If you allow me today. So first of all, endings unlocked. 21.9% of people completed the game achieving the vengeance ending where you kill everybody. Everybody to avenge your father. And only 9.77 per PMing people actually got the Wudu ending where you spare people. Some might say it's the best or uh, the true ending. Now, I want to know if that kind of disparity is due to the fact that people don't know about the fact that you can spare bosses. Because it used to be a thing, people didn't know you could spare people. I myself didn't know. I even tried at first to spare Sifu in the, in the intro, you know, when you fight Sifu as Yang. I thought you could potentially, maybe, spare your useless Manta, but... It's not possible, so I'm assuming maybe people didn't know about it or maybe it was too hard, so people just gave up on it because there's nothing harder than trying to spare Mr. Yang because he becomes enraged whenever you try to toy with him and you're most likely going to die, to die if you try to spare him. Anyway, we have the, the character gender selection. Oh, when it comes to that, I tend to play mostly as a male. But I had moments so I played as a female too. But 78%, 78.9% of people played as a male and 21.1% as a female. I don't think that's relevant. <laughs> I mean, who cares? <laughs> they're, both, they're both going to be throwing hands the same way, so who, who cares? Now, this part is quite interesting. Difficulty chosen. 21.9% of people played a student. I'm happy to see that it, it is that low, but I'm still... I don't know how I feel about the student difficulty being added to the game, even two years after the game has been out. I, st I still feel like... Uh, when you look at the big picture, Sifu became more accessible by adding more difficulties. You know, the master difficulty and the student difficulty. When you think about it and what Sifu stands for, I feel like it's counterintuitive to add a student difficulty. But at the end of the day, everybody's winning. You know, everybody's winning, and I guess that's okay. So 70.4% 70, 70 of people played the game and completed it on the disciple difficulty. So this is most likely going to be the normal experience you know who is crazy enough to have a first playthrough on the master difficulty <laughs> i mean you have to be crazy i don't think i still think you can make it you know because you have plenty of resources including my own which i made on youtube you have plenty of resources you can which can help you on your journey so yes i think it's probable that some people have a uh, you know what? Tell me. Tell me what was your first play. I mean, what difficulty was your first playthrough on? Mine, mine was. Uh, I can't even speak, man. Mine was on Disciple. And later I played on Master difficulty. And to this day, I still haven't switched. The moment I played on Master, I never switch back unless I'm trying to make a video about difficulties, which is not going to happen anytime soon. But. Yeah, I'm really glad they added the massive difficulty and all those mods and all those post-launch content. It's great. But only 4% of people completed the massive difficulty. I wonder why. Do you really think 
the like Sifu is really that hard as a game? Or do you feel like people just got bored and never came back to the game even after they added the arenas? I think that would be my hypothesis. Like maybe people just didn't know about it. Maybe people, 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 people dropped it. You know, they dropped the game because for the longest time we didn't have more content. And to be to keep playing the game, you have to be very creative. And now the game is amazing. It has all those arenas and you can go crazy with the mods and like when it comes to content, Sifu is we've been blessed. And all of those things we get for free, it's just incredible. So 4% of people completed the game on a massive difficulty. And I'm assuming it has to do with Fajar. <laughs> Fajar is a, ooh, he's a gatekeeper. Anyway, game language choice. You know what's French? I'm French, but I never tried to play the game in French. But I know Slow Club is a French studio. I think, I think they are. So maybe the next thing I'm going to do is try to play the game. I didn't even know that French was an, an option. I was all I was always switching between English and Cantonese. So maybe I'm going to give it a try. It's going to be so funny though. Listening to Yang say après huit ans. <laughs> okay, so 7.5% of people unlocked every skill permanently. Now, people are still a bit mad about the fact that you have to unlock a skill multiple times in order to perma unlock it. Now, I understand why they, they will be mad, but I also understand what Slow Club was going for. You know, you never learn a skill. When it comes to real life, for example, I know we're talking about a video game, but listen, when it comes to real life, there is no way you're going to master a skill. You know, if you only practice it once, no, practice makes perfect. So you, you will have to, you know that saying, I think it's Bruce Lee who said it, I'm not afraid of the person who bastard 1000 kicks, but I'm afraid of the person who can, like, who mastered, who, uh, something like, ah, I forgot about it. But it has to do with you really getting down to business and understanding that it's better to, to be sure about the skills you pick in the game. So let's say, for example, you unlocked, um, Taj Backfist. And you had to unlock it multiple times. Then you have to use it as many times as you unlock it because, well, you need to be sure that this is something you want to stick with. Because I think one playthrough is not enough for you for you to perma unlock every single skill. You have to play multiple times. So I think it's better. My understanding is it's better to to just focus on maybe five or six skills for per playthrough. And then you make sure that you master those skills. I think that's what they intended the people to do. But then people got mad because in any other video game, you never unlock um, a skill multiple times. You know, you never do that. But I understand what they were going for in Sifu. And I, I don't think people um, saw it the same way. I don't think they understood it. And they got mad because, you know, they want to, uh, maybe they want to go. I think there's a trophy attached to that too. So maybe they, they were looking to get the, looking forward to getting the trophy and they couldn't because they were like, why am I unlocking the same skill over and over and over and over again? Well, because practice makes, per makes perfect and they want you to be sure that you really want to focus on that skill. And if that's the case, then, then master it. Anyway. Zero. <laughs> that one is so funny. Zero point twenty three percent of arena players gold stamped the facing Limon Hui challenge. Now that's crazy. If you don't know, this is the last challenge in the Dragon Arena. And I think many people didn't even get to unlock the Dragon Arenas because you need to complete, you need to have to obtain a certain number of um, Tiger stamps in order to unlock the Dragon, Dragon Arenas. And then you still need to unlock multiple stamps within the Dragon arenas to be able to make it all the way to the last arena. So that's a lot of conditions you need to meet in order to even get there. So I think people might just give up along the way because I gotta be honest with you. The game, the base game was, it was okay when it comes to difficulty, you know, because the moment you, you actually start spending time, um, practicing, 
just trying to understand enemy patterns and just really understanding when and how to use those skills. Trust me, the main game is not that difficult, even on the master difficulty. The arenas is completely different. That th th those arenas, especially the Dragon arenas, some of them are quite toxic, even for me. And I spent, I have 300 hours at least at the very least in this game. And I'm telling you, the Dragon arenas are toxic. And you should respect anybody who goes tempt every single Dragon arenas because it's not about skill. Yes, skill is like 70%, but they have nerves of steel. Those people are insane. Yes, myself included, but those people are insane because some challenges are straight up made by a demon. Made by a demon. I, <laughs> I, I know what I'm talking about. So I can't see the average person endure that much toxicity and just keep going. That's not possible. So those numbers don't surprise me. I would like to see how many people actually completed the Dragon Arenas, actually get every single stamp. But I think it's going to be maybe like 2% because it's really that difficult and also very that tedious. So 0.23% gold stamped. It, it, it means that those people were able to fight through Fajar, Shan, Kuroki, Jinfang, and Yang without getting hit more than three times, more than six times, which is an achievement. It, it is huge because the choke. The chug factor is strong whenever you get to Yang or Jin Fang. Personally, I really struggle against Jin Fang because I, I just don't know why. I just don't know why. I just struggle against her. But yeah, 0.23%. That's a crazy number, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and then they talk about some post launch updates, two years of free updates. Like, this is a. I don't. You know what? I've paid $70 for multiple games. Uh, in the last two years, but I don't know how I don't know how to say it. I only paid, I think it was sixty dollars for the deluxe edition of Sifu, and I was always expecting them to maybe price the, the, the arenas or like, but they didn't. You know, they this is an indie studio, so if anybody needs the money, it's them. But guess what they did? They gave us updates for free. That's amazing. Again, when was the last time Stray received an update? <laughs> like, I'm going to start. I'm going to stop mentioning the cat game, but I, I, I just feel like after two years, you can put things in perspective and realize that sometimes when it comes to the game awards, it's not about the you know, it's not about rewarding the best game at the time. It's it's all about the most popular game, and sometimes yeah, it is deserved. When you take, for example, Sekiro winning Game of the Year, I feel like it's completely deserved. But when you have Red Dead Redemption 2 going up against, I think it was um, The Last of Us Part 2, which is, again, it, that game on its own is great. But when you compare it, when you compare it to even Ghost of Tsushima, I feel like The Last of Us Part 2 is not as big of a leap as Red Dead Redemption 2 was to Red Dead Redemption 1. So maybe it's just me, but I feel like at some point it's all about rewarding the most popular game. And that's sad because Sifu deserved that indie game of the year. And I might I might go as far as to say that nah, 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 nah. I was about to say deserve game of the year, but Elden Ring is a thing. <laughs> Elden Ring is a thing, so there's no way it's going to win it. Uh, but at least, at the very least, when it comes to the whole package, you know, I think, do you think... Listen, do you think maybe Sifu would have won Game of the Year if if he had all those post-launch content at launch? That's the thing. If the game launched with all the, with the, with the arenas, with the training mode being really in depth, with with um the mods, the outfits, and all those things you can unlock, do you really feel like the game with a bigger package would have been? And also, like all those difficulty settings, very important because many people quit because the game was too hard. Or maybe because I didn't want to invest that much time in understanding the skills and how they work. So I really want to know, do you think it would have won? Uh, never, for, never mind. The card game was always going to win. It's like a canon event. <laughs> I feel like no matter what we do, it was always going to win. And we only have to thank Elden Ring because if it wasn't for Elden Ring, 
straight would have won the game of the, the game of the year 100 so they talk about they you can see how many updates were added 15 which is great also the mods and modifiers 80, 97 uh i see some pictures but i don't know what they mean by that but overall one million six hundred and sixty thousand days spent i feel like i was like i, I contributed to half those days spent in the game <laughs> by myself and i'm pretty sure that in a in a year this number is going to to maybe go up by one million because people are people are still going to keep playing the game because it is that good and personally the game is never going to leave my console no matter what happens no matter what happens i'm never going to delete sifu even if even if in the past i question the fact that the game existed i'm going to maybe make a video about it the day i almost quit sifu altogether but no this i don't think this game is ever going to leave my side no we are made for life now so let me know what you think about those numbers and where you stand when it comes to where do you stand just just just, just say something bye